ISO is basically your sensor has um, all these little packets that are sensitive to light. You know, back in the day in film, they would have like these little particle grains that would hit there and they would react and that's what would cause your uh, image to expose. Except for now this time, this ISO basically increases your sensitivity to light or uh, increase your sensitivity to optics. So you have these little packets of ISO that basically you send energy into and it becomes a brighter image and they're throughout the entire sensor. So one thing to know about is every single, um, every single camera has a, um, a desired ISO. So you're like, oh, I just stopped on my ISO. Well, even in daylight, if you're going to an ISO 100, when your camera's rated at ISO 800, you're gonna see a lot of noise. And that's fine, you know, a lot of filmmakers like noise and grain in their image, it kind of gives it like a little film. But sometimes when you do that, you don't shoot at the proper ISO for your camera, or you're trying to push it, you get something that's called like a color shift or framing blend. So basically, your sensor is not like just one big brick. It's a, called, most of them are, I think almost all of them still are Bayer Petter sensors, which means that you've got, in every pixel, there's, um, oh yeah, in every three pixels, there's, a red, there's a blue, and then there's kind of like a green. So there's like 60% green, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna kind of botch, I think it's more like, so I think 60% green and then 20% red, 20% blue, it might be closer to 30, but I mean, you get the gist, 30, 30. There's more green than there is in there. Um, but so what happens is when you start pushing that ISO in there, it basically starts, it's too much energy and they start to blur together and so that way you get like fringing uh, and weird artifact in the image. And I, th you know, like, you know, some people don't care about that. For me, it's something I pay attention to. I just think it really takes you out of the moment because you're like, what's that weird purple blob when he's shooting into the light that's fringing on his left side? I, to me, I just, it's something I just noticed right away. Um, and always just kind of find distracting, especially when you're shooting documentary. I think you want to be as close to real life as possible. Um, I'm not a big flair when it comes to documentary. I mean, you know, everyone's got their own style and their their own way of doing things. I just, to me, it's like, that's distracting. But it, these are just things to keep in mind. Like, you know, every rules that we're talking about, everything that we're telling you are like, things to keep in mind. At the end of the day, you know, you've kind of, you know, if you know the basics, you can adjust fire and you know just kind of create your own voice and your own opinion if you you know if you really like that image and if you really like that you're super grainy and you're shooting at you know iso 3200 when your camera's only rated at 800 then more power to you i'm just trying to give you kind of like a basis of you know properly exposing your image and then the holy trinity comes down to just basically using your aperture using your iso and using your shutter angle to kind of get the proper image. So it's like as you adjust one, you know, you have to adjust another and you kind of just have to continue adjusting these to get that proper exposure because they all affect each other. Um, and, you know, like I said, um, that's just something that I always, you know, like people to remember is just those are the three things that are going to affect your image probably the most, you know, outside of lighting, which um, a little bit we talk about too, so.